Hey guys, it's Telus here. Welcome back to Lights Hope Chapel for part two of our little series looking at Holy Paladins and the changes that are coming to them in World of Warcraft Legion. In this video, we will be looking at the PvE and PvP talents coming to a Holy Paladin in Legion. Uh, so we can speed this on uh, quite a bit. Uh, in the last video, I spent way too much time talking about Lights Hope Chapel. Let's just say, yes, it is very beautiful and move on from there. Let's go ahead and take a look at their PvE talents. So, with that, uh, the PvE talent tree has changed uh, extensively. Uh, before we get into anything, I want, you to, I want you to take a look at the Holy Paladin right in front of me. It's actually r running with uh, that Doomfist or whatever it is, that transmog there. Uh, that is the advantage to having uh, a two-handed weapon <laughs> as your... Uh, a two-handed weapon as your artifact weapon in World of Warcraft Legion. But enough of that, let's go ahead and look at the uh, first to 15 tier. There are a lot of changes here. Uh, even there, you're going to see a lot of abilities that look kind of the same. Uh, even some icons that look the same, uh, they've changed. Uh, and part of that has to deal with the fact that, remember, Holy Power is gone for Holy Paladin. They're just going off of mana now. So, first 15 tier, we have Bestow Faith. If you use a friendly target, with faith for five seconds healing them for 129,000 at the end. So uh, this is like a, I guess you could say it's almost like Life Bloom a little bit, because um, Life Bloom always had that big heal at the end. Uh, we're gonna have that basically on the target. I'm gonna switch this off so that uh, <laughs> Aura of Mercy isn't popping up all the time. So let's go ahead and use Bestow Faith. I believe I have it down here, and we'll use it on this target W right here, as you can see right there. It just it's a buff on the target. And then at the very end, bam, healed for a ton. So it's like a it's like a life bloom, except for the hot effect is not there. The healing over time effect is not there in the beginning. Uh, and uh, it'll just be a burst heal at the end. So if you really like that playstyle of a druid, if you've tried it out before in a restoration druid, timing your uh, you know your heal for a certain specific time, that's what you use. Uh, this could be a popular item to use in PvP. Our second option here, or right, let's go to the third option on the far right hand side. Your Crusader Strike reduces the cooldown of your Holy Shock and Light of Dawn by 1.5 seconds. This really plays into being the battle healer and so forth. So I'm going to go ahead and use uh, Light of Dawn and Holy Shock, and then I'm just going to use Crusader Strikes, and you're going to see their cooldowns go down pretty quickly, and then we have it back up again. So this plays into that kind of playstyle of being able to be the battle healer, be in the thick of things, while at the same time being able to heal at the same time. So that's actually pretty cool. Uh, if you're pvp -er, you may really like this. If you like being in the battle with the, uh, you know, with the boss in a PvE raid, this is something you may like. So it's pretty cool to have. Last one here is Light's Hammer. This essentially works the same as it does on live. It's moved all the way from the 90 tier up to the 15 tier. However, uh, there is a slight change. Uh, it no longer reduces enemy movement speed by 50% for two seconds uh, per each ticket had. It used to do that. Uh, basically, with Holy Paladins becoming kind of battle uh, permanently, I guess you could say, more being battle focused, uh, or I should say melee healing focused, basically what they have done is they've said, okay, um, that'll be a little too strong to have for a holy paladin. Otherwise, uh, it still functions the way it usually does. You check the hammer and it does the nest of healing all over the place. So, still works the same. On the second tier, we have Rule of Law. Yes, this has the same icon of Long Arm of the Law. Long Arm of the Law. Sorry, talking a little fast there. But it still uh, is a little... It's completely different. It's a new ability. Rule of Law. Increase the range your heals and the reach of your Mastery Lightbringer by 50% for 10 seconds. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, heal this target here. Uh, first, I'm going to put Rule of Law down here. It's got two charges. I'm going to heal this target with a flash of light here, and you're going to see my 115,000. So, I'm going to actually um, punch this here, and this should increase its healing. And you can see the nice little aura effect there. Now, it's up to 119,000. So, uh, because the range of my mastery was increased, that means that the proximity needed to get better healing from the target also increased. I know that's a little difficult to understand, but basically, uh, it increases the reach of your mastery lightbringer by 50%. So, you're originally at 
Uh, I believe it's 20 yards. Uh, let me double check and make sure on that one right there. Um, Mastery, Lightbringer. Proximity to your target heals up. Okay, so uh, basically it does not have an actual... Um, it does not have an actual uh, kind of uh, limit on it. So 20% is the max that you can do. So uh, I can try flash healing here. And I have 113 here. 117 here. And we'll just keep moving up. 121 there. And I think that's going to be about... Whoops, I don't, want, I don't want crits. At least now. Okay, so like 121 is here. Okay, so I need to be like this close to the target, which is like, what, 10 yards? In order to get uh, the most power I can out of that mastery. Now, if I go ahead and pop Rule of Law, I can go ahead and scoot back a little bit. And that range should increase by 30%. Stop giving me crits. There's 121 there. Uh, let's see if I can get one more off. That was another crit. Darn it. But as you can see, I'm able to scoot back a little bit further and still get the full 20% effect out of my mastery, which is nice to have. Also, it increases the range of your heals by 50%. So, I mean, your heals are already at 40-yard range. You now have 60-yard range on your heals. So if someone's really far away, you pop long uh, rule of law, uh, and you're able to heal them. This will be more useful in PvP, in my opinion. Uh, something that PvPers will like to take. In the middle here, you have Unbreakable Spirit. Reduces the cooldown of your Divine Protection, Divine Shield, Divine Protection, Lay on Hands by 30%. Uh, remember that your artifact weapon already reduces lay, lay on hands by 30%. So this will bring it down to a 4.9 minute cooldown. Uh, just under 5 minutes. So that will bring it down pretty far. Uh, I will say though that uh, this is nerfed from what it used to be on live. On live it's actually 50%. So they have nerfed it down to 30%. But that talent is still there. One of the coolest talents here. Uh, prop pallies have is basically baseline, but um, they have been nice enough to give this to uh, in the talent tree. I think for both Rhett and Holy, but if, at least for Holy. Um, it is called Divine Steed. You summon your Holy Mount to ride for 3 seconds, increasing movement speed by 100%, usable while indoors or in combat. So this is really cool. I love this ability. Um, it's even more fun as a prop pally, but... As you can see, I'm inside. I normally cannot mount. Uh, as you can see, I cannot use my my hearth seize, so it can only use outside. Uh, that's not gonna happen with my divine steed. I'm gonna pop it, and as you can see, I can still move. I can still heal. Um, you know, I can do everything while still mounted. Uh, so that's one of the coolest <laughs> one of the coolest things about paladins is this cool divine steed. So really, I see. Uh, these options, uh, at least Rule of Law and Divine Steed being uh, PvP options, Rule of Law really being more, I think, more of the PV, the only PvE option open to them. Uh, they can take the, um, Unbreakable Spirit, which, I mean, we give your Divine Protection down to um, a 40, what is that, 40 second cooldown? Somewhere around there. Uh, it'd be like a 40, 43 second cooldown, something like that. Uh, with a 30% reduction, but um, basically I feel as though uh, 42 seconds is what it'd be. Excuse me. Um, I feel like it's for PVE, it's going to be Unbreakable Spirit or Rule of Law uh, for that increased healing, and then for PVP, it'll probably be Divine Steed or Rule of Law, whichever one you find more useful. So moving into the 45 tier, we have Blinding Light. The big damage, the, the big change here is it's actually been buffed. It used to be a two-minute cooldown, now it's a 1.5 second cooldown, and now it actually does damage. So uh, I can actually do damage with it. I'm not going to display it at the moment because uh, then we'll incur the uh, the cooldown, and I can't show these others. Um, but for the most part, uh, it, it's a buff overall for what you can do. Uh, Fist of Justice. This has been changed. It used to be just like replaces your Hammer of Justice and it's now a 30 second cooldown. Uh, I thought that was a cop out because Hammer of Justice a while back used to be just a 30 minute cooldown and then they were 30 second cooldown and they were like, nope, we're making a minute cooldown but we'll give it back to you as a talent. And I thought that was cheap. But now we have this. Judgment reduces the remaining cooldown on Hammer of Justice by 10 seconds. Judgment comes up every 11 seconds. Uh, so even if you're using it on cooldown, you basically, you don't even get up to what Fist of Justice was. So that's really disappointing. Uh, there are no procs to get Judgment back up running again, so you're just, you know, honestly, I'm not a big fan of this talent. 
repentance, okay? Forces an enemy to meditate, incapacitating for them the target, and dealing up to maximum of 25% of the target's health in damage over one minute. I don't think I can display this here. It's an invalid target, but that's the big change there, is it actually does 25% of the target's health in damage. Uh, one of the problems with Paladins is that they've they've always had that lack of CC and so forth, specifically in a PvE, uh, maybe dungeon setting and so forth. And repentance was always required uh, in the talent tree, which is frustrating because everyone else had their baseline. Well, now this is like an awesome CC because it does 25% of the target's health in damage over one minute. So this, I think, will be more useful, especially if you want to juggle. Uh, maybe like who has repentance versus who has like you know the other uh, CCs on them in a PV uh, in like a mythic dungeon or something. This could be really useful, and that would be a lot of fun. And then the last one here, blinding light. I already explained it. Basically, the big thing here is that its cooldown has been reduced by 30 seconds, and it actually does damage. So you can see the disorient there, and then I actually did damage 90,000 holy damage to the target. Uh, to compare, uh, wow, that was a crit. So that's not really a good example. Uh, my Crusader Strike does 80,000 damage, so that kind of gives you a comparison of how much uh, damage it actually does. So, with that, let's move to the ore tier. Uh, you saw a little bit of this in the other video, but first we have Devotion Ore. Allies within 10 yards take 20% reduced damage, split over the number of allies in the aura. While aura more... <laughs> wow, um, or more. <laughs> While aura mastery is active, all effective allies gain the full damage reduction. So... The, let's say these two guys are my allies right now, and they're taking damage. We're going to take, uh, as you can see, it reduces all damage taken by 6%. I'm going to get away, and it's now 20%. So as you can see there, as I gained people into the uh, range of it, it, it got to 6%. And as I move this way, I'm going to get to only one target. So now it's split between both of us at 10%, and then I get even further, and it'll be 20% reduction. So it depends on how many you have. This could be something very potent in an arena of sorts, because you know it's just a flat 10% damage reduction for both you and your buddy, which is pretty awesome. Uh, it has reducing effectiveness in something like a in a um, in a raid or in a raided battleground. So it's going to be up to you. We'll look at it compared to these other ones. We have Aura of Sacrifice. While you're above 75% health, 10% of all damage taken by allies within 10 yards is, redi is redirected to you. While Aura Master is active, 10% of all effective healing you deal is replicated to all allies in the aura. This is powerful, in my opinion. Um, this will be... Uh, this is really good. I, I just... In a raid setting, there's no way you take Devotion Aura over something like Aura Sacrifice. I just don't see it. Um, in a raided Battleground setting, it can be kind of sketchy. Uh, you may be kind of worried. But uh, definitely, in a raid setting, this is ex exceptionally powerful um, ability to have. Considering you have beacons and all kinds of different ways of healing. Uh, so, I, I honestly really do like this for a raid setting. The last option here is... Aura of Mercy restores 3,000 health to three injured allies within 10 yards every one second. While Aura Mastery is active, healing, uh, while Aura Mastery is active, heals all allies in Aura instead of just three, and the healing is increased by 100%. So it's like a burst heal when you pop um, healing Aura. This is something that is going to be used in raids and raided battlegrounds. Basically, on this tier, you have Devotion Aura, which I really only see in arenas, in twos and threes arenas, etc., or if you're just, you know, solo out in the world trying to beat a boss. Uh, and then, in a raid setting, I can see Aura of Sacrifice being uh, more of something taken, and Aura of Mercy taken in both either a raid setting or a raided battleground setting. I could be wrong about Aura of Sacrifice being popular in a raided battleground setting, but I would probably think maybe they would like Aura of Mercy uh, a little bit more. I'm not quite sure about that. Uh, if you're on a capture a flag and it's just you and the tank holding the flag in a capture a flag like type battleground, then devotion or becomes a really big uh, you know kind of opportunity. But you know if all your teammates come in, then you lose all that damage reduction and then it becomes not as good. So I really only see that as more of a arena type ability. And then the other two auras are more rated battleground slash uh, raid potential. 
Um, as far as what mythic dungeons we'll choose, I really think just all three of them have equal opportunity there. On the 75 tier, we have some changes here, mostly because, um, basically because uh, Holy Power is gone. You see Holy Prism move to this tier. Uh, it functions essentially the way it does on live, so really nothing has changed there. Holy Avenger has been changed uh, ever so slightly, I believe, uh, because it no longer deals with Holy Power. So they had to change away from it, and it's now a 1.5 minute cooldown instead of a 2 minute cooldown. And it increases your haste by 30% and your Holy Shock healing by 30% for 20 seconds. So really big uptime. Uh, about the same uptime as before. It's a, it, it's a, it's a healing cooldown. Uh, they just had to retool it to deal with the fact that you no longer have uh, Holy Power to deal with as a Holy Paladin. Same thing with Divine Purpose. Uh, basically it has to be retooled so that it works with the uh, new fact with the fact that you no longer have holy power uh, light of dawn and holy shock have a 15% chance to not start their cooldown and make the next cast free um, I can try and do this but uh, chances are I will never get one off I'll never be as lucky as I was with that artifact weapon proc of um, <laughs> of light of dawn but um, this is an option to you uh, I've always been a big fan of uh, Divine Purpose, though this is a completely different iteration of it, and it's a little bit different, so I'm not sure how popular it will be. Um, and to be honest, I have no clue where this power of this... Oh, there it is! Power of the Silver Hand. Uh, in the last video, I believe we talked about this. Uh, Holy Light and Flashlight have a chance to unlock the power of the Silver Hand, increasing healing done of your next Holy Shock by 20% in all damage, and effective healing you do within the next 10 seconds. I tried to show this off, I could not get it to work, um, which is odd because I guess maybe I have to cast it on myself for it to actually be an option. Um, that's some weird RNG there. So that's a spell visual for it, um, just kind of going quickly back to uh, the PV, I mean sorry, the abilities video and the artifact weapon video to give you uh, an idea on that spell visual. So um, that covers the 75 tier. Let's go into the 90 tier. Uh, Sanctify Wrath. Uh, Vending Wrath lasts 50% longer and also reduces Holy Shark's cooldown by 50% for its duration. Uh, the only change here is that it no longer increases the critical strike chance of Holy Shock by 20%. So that is the big uh, change there for this uh, ability. We have a Fervent Martyr. Casting Holy Light or Flash of Light on your Beacon of Light reduces the cost of your next Light of the Martyr by 35%. Stacking. So... Uh, let's go ahead and just, uh, set this up here. Uh, I believe it's flash of lights, um, on the target, and it stacks up. So I have two stacks now. Uh, I'm not quite sure. They didn't really give, a. looks like it caps out at three stacks. So, now I have the cost of my next light of the martyr reduced by 100%. So it's now instant, 100%. There we go. Uh, Light of the Martyr uh, is 16,000 mana compared to something like Holy Light at 26,000 mana and Flashlight at 35,000 mana. Uh, to be honest, it, this is this is not a good talent um, because Light of the Martyr already costs less than these other abilities and they it does more healing. Um, it's an emergency heal for the most part because it's instant cast, but there's really... Um, there's really uh, nothing you could like I just I don't see this being taken compared to the other ones because uh, I mean it already is low enough I mean it's a mana it's a mana reduction ability which you're going to have to be paying a, a close attention to your mana in World of Warcraft Legion but at the same time like it already costs less than your other main healing abilities so I'm not getting it here I'm not getting it here I would I would go sanctified wrath over this easily though Honestly, my favorite in this tier is Judgment of the Light. Judgment now applies Judgment of the Light to the target. Uh, if you remember, that was an old... Back when they split Judgment into three different types of Judgment, this is going to look very familiar. Judgment now applies Judgment of the Light to the target, causing the next 40 successful attacks against the target to heal the attacker from 4,300. This effect can only occur per one second on each target. So, I do believe... If I can set this up right, I'm going to use this here. So I now have 40 stacks, okay? 30 seconds on this. And I, I'm, I, 
Uh, I'm at full health, but I should be getting healed from this, okay? Now, I can also apply this to this here. So we have it on both, okay? And then the damage that is done to both will be able to heal... I'll be, I'll be able to get healing from both, okay? So that's why it says only occur per one second on each target. So you can have, with a 30 second cooldown, you can at least have two of these up at a time. Uh, judgments of the Light. And 40 successful attacks against the target to heal the attacker for 4300. So this is basically nice raid healing. Easy, easy raid healing. Um, I'm not sure... Uh, it'll be great maybe if you're an offensive healer in a rated battleground. Uh, it should be good in arenas. Um, however, probably for those two, um, I'm probably going to see people take Sanctified Wrath um, instead. But Judgment of the Light definitely great uh, in terms of definitely for PvE and also uh, for Mythic, uh, just, you know, dungeon PvE rate. Uh, PvE dungeons and PvE ratings, so I think this is definitely the go-to option for that. The 100 tier is my absolute favorite tier. Uh, I think it's really interesting. Uh, so you have your Beacon of Faith, which essentially works the same as the other Beacon of Faith uh, that's on live right now. However, it now has a 20% reduced effectiveness. So it used to basically be like, okay, you have two beacons. Uh, that's no longer the, the fact. Now, you know, I have, you know, your main beacon and then you have your off beacon um, let me go ahead and get this down here you have the off beacon and then as I heal myself um, you're gonna see the healing numbers be a little bit different where they should be oh I guess not so <laughs> it looks like uh, there is a bug in terms of the tooltip here so as of right now I'm not sure which one is correct whether the tooltip is correct or the bug is correct um, so it may that 20% reduced effectiveness may not be there uh, or they may not have just not fixed it in game and so beacon of faith uh, will eventually heal at 20% less but for right now it is healing for uh, the full amount of the beacon just like these uh, just like the main beacon target is so uh, with that, let's look at these other options here, though, which I think are really awesome, and I have no clue which one's going to be better for PvE, PvP, etc. I, I think people are just going to have to decide for themselves and, and kind of look at stuff. Um, so first, we have Beacon of the Lightbringer. Mastery Lightbringer now increases your healing based on the target's proximity to either you or your Beacon of Light, whichever is closer. The healing and range of Light of Dawn are increased by 30%. I think this is very strong. Um, Light of Dawn already has kind of weak healing, so giving more healing out of Light of Dawn I think is really good. But then also having that extra bonus for your um, for your actual uh, healing on your beacon is actually pretty cool. So I'm going to get the full top end healing out of this no matter what. It doesn't matter how close I am, because it's already so close to the beacon target right there. If I were to, uh, if I were to move the beacon, place the beacon on myself, as you can see, the healing goes back down. So that's actually a really cool, just kind of interesting option. Uh, I can see this being used uh, definitely in arenas, um, but uh, it can be used maybe in raids when you're kind of moving around too much. Uh, or maybe in a rated battleground setting. Uh, I would say, though, for the most part, this is going to be more of a PvP talent than a PvE one. I, I, I would I would expect PvE to be more something like Beacon of Faith, or this one, Beacon of Virtue. Apply a Beacon of Light to your target, and it replaces Beacon of Light. So apply a Beacon of Light to your target, and three injured allies within 30 yards for 8 seconds. Your heals will heal them all for 40% of the amount heals. So, this is better AoE healing, which I think Holy Paladins are lacking drastically, and this is why I think this will be taken in PvE, it's just because they're, you're already lacking so much in, in raid healing, um, AoE healing, uh, really bad because of the changes to Light of Dawn, and the fact that you no longer have Radiance, I think this is going to be the option to take. Uh, you're going to go ahead and plop that there, and then you can start healing targets and so forth, and it will heal everyone around them and it's only a 
12 second cooldown and it's for 8 seconds so basically um, you're able to keep that up pretty consistently 66% uptime uh, the only downside is that it costs 3300 mana uh, sorry 33,000 mana uh, to put that into perspective uh, holy light costs 26,000 mana so uh, flashlight costs 35,000 mana so it is expensive um, that's something you have to watch out for but this um, I just uh, this is the raid option I think for sure I even the mythic dungeon option I think basically oh my gosh you know we took a lot of AoE damage there I was expecting a lot of AoE damage there I could pop some ores and so forth but really I can use my ber my beacon of virtue to get people up and I think that's really going to be uh, the best option there unless you're like a main tank healer then you can maybe beacon of faith will be better um, or maybe even Beacon of Lightbringer if you have to be kind of in a different odd pos position. But I really see Beacon of Lightbringer being more of the PvP option. And then Beacon of Virtue being the PvE option. And then Beacon of Faith is like the other option. So, with that, let's go ahead and look at the Honor Talents. For a uh, Holy Paladin in a World of Warcraft of Legion, we've gone through all the PvE talents. Let's go ahead and take a look at the PvP talents. PvP is going to operate on a Call of Duty-like system. You're going to start at level 1, and you're going to level all the way up to level 50. As you level all the way up to level 50, you will start to fill in these PvP talents. You'll start with the Gladiator's Medallion. By level 10, you will have Spreading the Word. And then by 13, you will have Adaptation, and you'll begin going down to Blessed Hands. And then you'll start once again with Relentless and go all the way down to Avenging Crusader. Avenging Crusader will be the last one, and I think you get at level 46. At level 50, you can Prestige, get a cool item or whatever, maybe a mount or something. Um, or a pet, I don't know what it is, cosmetics, you name it. And then from there, you're able to uh, start over back on Gladiator's Medallion. So it's really going to be kind of a choice like, uh, do I want to start all over again, or do I want to just keep the talents I have? So, with that being said, we're going to go through each tier. The first two tiers are generic. Uh, they're generally uh, the same. Uh, the first tier is the same for all classes. The second tier is the same for most healing classes. And then we have the Holy Paladin specific abilities. So in this first tier, we have Gladiator's Medallion. First, you'll start off with an Honorable Medallion, and the Honorable Medallion will be kind of like a, um, a three-minute heirloom trinket. And then the Gladiator's Medallion reduces it down to two minutes. I honestly see most PV, uh, most, most uh, healers, excuse me, taking this ability. I think this is the, the, the best option for um, anybody in uh, that's healing in PvP because you have direct control whether you get, um, you know, you get out of a CC. The reason why I say that is because the other option here is adaptation. All loss of control effects with a duration of five seconds or more will activate your honorable medallion spell, but only causes it to incur a 60 second cooldown. So, uh, you still are able to activate your honorable medallion because it doesn't replace it, but it's a three minute cooldown, and if you do that, it will take adaptation off cooldown for three minutes. Otherwise, you have a 60 second cooldown. I really like this for DPS. I'm not a big fan of it for healing because, you know, getting out of sticky situations as a healer is the utmost importance, and so Gladiator's Medallion gives you that. The third option here is Relentless. It replaces your Honorable Medallion, and the duration of incoming crowd control effects is reduced by 25%. I honestly only see people taking this that are tanks. Um, people who can survive well. Maybe a Resto Druid because of all the healing over time effects. Otherwise, I don't see other people taking this. On the second tier, we have the healing tier. First, we have Defender of the Week. After you heal a target below 50% health, you gain 20% haste for 5 seconds. Vim and Bigger. While you are at or above 80% health, your healing is increased by 20%. And then lastly, we have Divine Favor. Your next Holy Light or Flash of Light is increased by 100%, costs no mana, and is unable to be interrupted. Um, I think Holy Priests actually have this, and that's also because they also have the very similar flash of light, holy light type system in terms of their healing structure. So I think holy uh, priests have this, otherwise the other healers have like three standard talents that are all the same. This is a little bit different. In the third tier, we have Divine Vision. Increases the range of your aura by 30 yards. So remember you have those three different auras that you can choose, one of them being uh, the one we have now, Aura of Mercy. Uh, right now it's only at 10 yards, um, which isn't very much. Uh, and, you know, we talk about being a battle healer uh, as a as a holy paladin. Um, this increases it by 30 yards, so it makes it a 40-yard aura. In all honesty, um, if you're going to be a battle healer, I mean, like, this is useless anyways, um, because you're always going to be in range. But this can be a quality of life thing, like, oh, man, I can't heal that person or whatever. Uh, instead, you'll be able to have divine vision. I don't know. It's up to you. 
we'll see how it actually works um, in a arena setting maybe devotion or a paired uh, devotion or a paired with divine vision will be very useful um, maybe if you're uh, but if you're talking about uh, having uh, or of sacrifice or or of mercy I don't see uh, I, I just don't see divine vision being as powerful um, you definitely may want devotion aura when paired with divine vision for arenas but you definitely wouldn't want it for something maybe like uh, RBGs because you only want certain people within that war because you don't want it to be split by a bunch of uh, different you know different players that you really you don't want to be splitting that damage reduction with so it's kind of you know it's 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 a talent choice you know you get to decide whether you want that or not let's look at the other one so you can see what you're up against unbound freedom blessing of freedom also increases movement speed by 20 percent uh this is pretty strong uh i already like this better than divine vision to be honest uh it's a really strong ability and then the last one here is cleanse the weak when you dispel an ally with your aura uh, that is within your aura, excuse me, all allies within your aura are dispelled of the same effect. That's pretty strong. So if you stacked up with some people, um, and, uh, good example, uh, Howling, uh, Howling Wind. Uh, or if you get, or I should say, if you get like a, a, a Seed of Corruption or something that spreads pretty well, um, that's a dot effect, uh, being able to dispel that and have everyone within the aura and that actually worked, that, that's actually pretty good. Um, and with some team coordination, that can come into play really well. So that's an option there. Um, all three of these are interesting options. I think probably I would go with Unbound Freedom, but I'm a selfish person, so <laughs> I don't know if um, that's the uh, best option to have in PvP. And of course, it always changes on the medium that you're using, whether you're in rated battlegrounds, you know, regular battlegrounds, or actually in an arena. In the, the fourth tier, we have Holy Ritual. Allies are healed for 32,000 when you cast a Blessing spell on them, and healed again for 32,000 when the Blessing ends. So remember, you can have all three Blessings on target at the same time. Um, so that's something you should know. Uh, the lowest cooldown Blessing is going to be Blessing of Freedom at 21 seconds, so there's an option there. You have Pure of Heart. Whenever you or allies within 10 yards are healed from any source, they are cleansed of all diseases and poisons. Uh, I really don't know if this works with Aura of Mercy. Uh, they say any source. So I'm going to assume that it is, and if it is, this is just too strong. As against, if you're facing any type of assassination rogue, or, um, any type of assassination rogue, or a, uh, an unholy death knight, this is just too strong. You have to have this. Um, if it works well with Aura of Mercy. If it doesn't, then I can understand it not working that great. But uh, this is pretty strong if it, if it indeed works with Aura of Mercy. And just so you know, the reason why uh, I don't know for sure how these work and how um, uh, and why I'm not in a Battleground testing is because the Battleground's a kind of uh, in a, an uncontrolled environment and I'm not able to show things very effectively and narrate very effectively in there. And uh, it's actually kind of difficult sometimes to get into a Battleground. So... Uh, that is the reason why I'm not showing you these actually in Battleground. And also, it would take uh, a different Battleground each time to actually show you, because uh, I would have to change talents. The third option here is Light's Grace increases the healing done by your Holy Light by 100%, and your Holy Light reduces all damage the target receives by 5% for 8 seconds, stacks up to 3 times. Uh, this is, uh, in my opinion, Arena or Flag Carrier type talent. Uh, otherwise, I would prefer the other two options to Light's Grace. In the 5th tier, we have Avenging Light. When you heal with Holy Light, all enemies within 10 yards of the target take Holy Damage, equal to 30% of the amount healed. Uh, not too sure about this one. Because, uh, you know, latency, lag, people can be all over the place, and you're not really counting on the actual damage, so I don't know about that. You have Ultimate Sacrifice. Your Blessing of Sacrifice now transfers 100% of all damage to you into a damage over time effect. This is really strong. Considering the changes to Blessing of Sacrifice, that you can now uh, heal, you can go beyond 100% of your health pool and just continue to heal a target um, as long as you never drop below 20%. This makes it really easy to never drop below 20%. Uh, that's really awesome. So I can see this being a very popular option. The last one here is Darkest Before the Dawn. Every five seconds when he... 
every five seconds, the healing done by your next Light of Dawn is increased by 20% stacks up to 10 times. This effect does not occur while Light of Dawn is on cooldown. Uh, this is really strong. I, I personally really like this ability, and I probably would take this one over the others. Um, definitely over Avenging Light. I think this this is what this one's worthless. This can be very useful, uh, especially in a rated setting, I think, and in an arena setting. But this is my if you're talking about just like basic P, like battlegrounds and so forth, world PvP. This is the best one right here, I think, by far. You have, in the final tier, we have Spreading the Word. Your allies affected by your aura gain an effect after you cast Blessing of Protection or Blessing of Freedom. Blessing of Protection, physical damage reduced by 30% for 6 seconds. Or Blessing of Freedom, cleared of all movement impairing effects. Um, so, Blessing of Freedom doesn't clear these abilities. It just grants you immunity to them. Uh, so I can see this being useful. However, if the target's far away, then you would need something like Divine Vision, so just something to look out there for. You have Blessed Hands. Your Blessing spells now all have one additional charge. Uh, this puts it in line with how it is on live, uh, having that extra charge. Uh, I can't remember if that was through a talent or that was baseline, but uh, I honestly think having extra charges on, on uh, your Blessing spells is pretty important. And then lastly here we have Avenging Crusader. It will replace your Avenging Wrath. It's now a one minute cooldown. So Avenging Wrath was a two minute cooldown. This will be a one minute cooldown. You become the ultimate Crusader of Light. Increasing your Crusader Strike, Judgment, and Auto Attack damage by 40%. The cooldown recovery rate of your Crusader Strike and Judgment is increased by 50% when you deal damage with those abilities. And you and the nearest two injured allies will be healed for 200% of the damage done. Last 20 seconds. This is awesome! How can you not live? How can you not take this ability? One minute cooldown. That means you have a 33% uptime on this ability, and you can dish out tons of damage and heal at the same time. That's awesome. I'd take this one. I'd take this one over all the others. Forget the others. This is pretty cool. Um, so that's all the honor talents for um, a holy paladin. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, get hyped for the next video. I am going to be going into Havoc Demon Hunters, which is the brand new class in World of Warcraft Legion. Um, but I really do hope you guys enjoyed this uh, this video looking at uh, Holy Paladins. PvE is really, I think, going to change their playstyle. PvP won't be changing too much, uh, but there's some fun stuff coming their way, like Avenging uh, Crusader. Uh, that will be a lot of fun to play with and uh, mess around with. Remember, you're you're dealing with a two-handed weapon uh, now with Crusader Strike and Consecration and able to deal out some damage, and that's just really cool to have as a Holy Paladin. So just keep that in mind. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the first video, and uh, I hope to see you guys in the next videos, and uh, hopefully there will be some Holy Paladins out there. Otherwise, I'll see you guys later. Tail us out.